Parish work is pretty similar wherever you travel in the world. Here in South Africa, the other region that's part of the British province, the Jesuits are responsible for caring for people in some of the poorest parishes in the country, such as here at St. Martin de Porres in Soweto. Soweto remains synonymous with the fight against apartheid in South Africa, and many can clearly recall the events of June 1976 when students rose against government oppression. Soweto paints a more colourful picture today, and the challenges of running a parish here 30 years on are rather different. It's been a very busy day. I um, got up at 6 to lock up the big dogs, which we use for security. And then before 7 o'clock I had a message on the phone to say that one of the parishioners had died. And uh, then the young adults were here at half past 8 to start a retreat day. At 9 o'clock a funeral began. Then we went to bury that man, got back here in time for a late lunch, continued with the young adult day of prayer. And now we're talking with the youth group and uh, we have confessions in about an hour's time. I don't think that all Jesuits ought to be in parishes and I don't think all Jesuits should be in a parish at some stage, no. But I think it is good for us as a group to always have a few people in parish work because it helps to keep us in touch with what's going on at ordinary parish level. These people are part of our lives, they're part of the parish, they're here, they're round about. Most of the businesses round about wish they'd go away. I'm told frequently that if we didn't feed them, they wouldn't be here. This of course is untrue. If we didn't feed them, they would be here, but they'd be dead in the doorways. And so it's a tremendously important part of what we do. We're basically third and fourth year medical students. We come after class to the church and obviously refer patients to surrounding clinics and hospitals for more appropriate care if that's what they need. I don't see the, the parish work as boring or anything. I mean, it fires me up and I love it. I mean, I'm probably in my element working in the parish. So, so I, I, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. And I think that, you know, the work we do here is missionary, especially, for example, people on the streets. Some of them, you know, are people of other faiths people who have never heard perhaps you know about what the Catholic Church is even um, that come to us for help. The township of Nyanga is just 20 minutes from Cape Town's manicured lawns and golf courses but this tough territory isn't on the tourist trail. The Dominican nuns have left after one of them was shot in the chest but Jesuit Jerry Lorimer, now in his 90s, remains as the parish priest. You see we have these bars across the doors because we had break-ins, so we have to have something solid to prevent that happening. That's because you're so generous. Jerry delivers weekly communion to parishioners too weak to make it to his Sunday Mass. It's all yourself who just leaves this house where a young chap of 22 was stabbed to death. This is happening constantly. Yeah. So there's a lot of violence. Uh, It may seem like another country, but we're a stone's throw from Nyanga. Welcome to the University of Cape Town, where the Catholic chaplain is a Jesuit priest. The contrast with the township couldn't be more vivid, but the Jesuits embrace the diversity. We let the different activities simply 
fit together as a whole. We're not quite sure sometimes quite what the whole looks like, uh, but it makes for very interesting discussion and very interesting conversations in the community. You know, if, if, if I asked Jerry, what was it like in Anger, and he says, what are you doing at UCT? And then somebody else says, well, actually, I was in the hospital. And somebody says, I've got to go away now. I've got an article to finish. You know, there's a certain kind of uh, reflective um, energy about that.